All right, so for those who haven't heard or haven't talked to, uh, this year I made the finals and I'm part of the Berkeley Poetry Slam team that'll be competing in nationals in Oakland. Yeah. This year. Woo. driving to LA three days later to go compete with uh, with my team and this was a this was a poem my third round poem the last one I did in the finals that pretty much made uh, made me make the team and it's deserves a little back backstory the uh, I've been writing poetry for about 19 years and the first couple of years I don't know why my mom likes hearing them again, but they're they're pretty bad. Like imagine imagine third grade English capabilities and just be sad about it. Very <laughs> terrible. But when uh, when I was ten years old, I pretty much traced that back as the first time that I decided I wanted to write, and this is a poem about that. He wore a pair of tattered pants of soiled and faded hue, and from the torn crown of his hat a lock of hair hung through. He had no shoes upon his feet, no coat upon his back. His home was on the friendless street, and his name was Little Jack. My grandfather was John Doherty, a child of a Great Depression, less than enough to eat in the mouth of Philly, an Irish name and a poet's heart in the heart of 1930s poverty. He was a survivor, a storyteller, a wartime submariner and a naval code breaker, diving behind enemy lines for months at a time where silence meant the same as staying alive. As a kid, I was a little afraid of him. Not afraid, but intimidated, and not of him, but his presence. The way a general never asks for respect, it just follows him wherever he goes. His throat was a cannon. His voice could command any room, and the kindness in his eyes shined brightest when he was laughing. I can thank him for my predisposition to poker, whiskey, and most importantly, poetry. I've heard that poets are not born. They are forged, brought to life in the fires of life experience and inspiration. I'll always remember the day he gave me a glimpse of his flames. I asked him how he could deal with seven kids. He said it was mostly easy, but on road trips, he told me, the only way to keep screaming kids quiet was to start reciting a poem that always made them cry. <laughs> Little Jack, a heartstring attack about a tattered young boy who saves a baby's life at the price of giving his own. As soon as he began the poem, I couldn't believe what happened next. My feet became soaking wet. I looked to my left and what was left of my mom and two of my aunts held each other above water as a flood burst between them. He worked words like a sorcerer, rendering the fabric of the word obsolete, casting spells in melody, rhythm, and beat to show me the story he conjured into being. I could feel holes ripped behind my mind where the universe expanded in space and time. My eyes dilated wider and somewhere deep inside I realized a simple truth. Magic, defined, is essentially speaking to make amazing things happen. That means not only is magic real, but it runs in the family. <laughs> I felt heat rising in molten tides of passion and epiphany. I need to learn these powers of verbal alchemy. I want to be a poet. When my mother told me he was gone, I held her with more arms than I thought possible. I still think of you sometimes when I write, and I hope that somewhere there's a 10-year-old boy who still believes in magic. Very nice, very nice.